It's 2013 and I'm returning to Perth. In this episode, I take a look around Moree before hitting the road and travelling down to Narrabri, where I have a good look around the district. Let's go. This is the main street of Moree. First time on Tuesday and there's practically no one in town. Traffic. No people. The Wirarai and Kamalaroi peoples are the earliest known inhabitants of the area and the town's name is said to come from an Aboriginal word for rising sun long spring or waterhole. The town was settled by Europeans in the 1850s and local Aboriginal residents were placed in missions, later Aboriginal reserves. Moree is a major agricultural centre noted for its part in the Australian cotton growing industry which was established there in the early 1960s. It is situated in the Moree Plains Shire. Moree is home to artesian hot spring baths which are famous for their reputed healing qualities. There are a number of heritage listed sites in the area. Moree has been affected by major flooding on a number of occasions. In February 1955, the highest recorded major flood affected Moree with a record flood peak of 10.85 metres, or 35.6 feet. Most of the central business district of the town and 800 homes were flooded. The most recent of those at 2023 was in October 2022 when Moree experienced major flooding with the Mahai River peaking at 10.5 metres or 34.4 feet and 4,000 residents were told to evacuate. This was part of an event that saw major flood levels statewide. This C-47 Dakota was manufactured in 1943 and delivered to Australia in January 1945. In 1975 it was converted to a civilian DC-3 and on the 10th of October 1975 handed over to the Papua New Guinea Defence Force in the name of foreign aid. She was pensioned off on the 11th of February 1992. It was bought by tender from the Papua New Guinea Defence Force in July 1993. The aircraft was flown to Moree in two stages. The first flight was conducted from Port Moresby to Cairns on Saturday 21st of August 1993 and the second took place the following week, landing in Moree on the 28th of August 1993. After a lot of preparatory work, it was towed through three fences and two roads to the car park of the tavern, where it sat for two months while the foundations for the aircraft were put in place. The C-47 Dakota was finally lifted into place by three cranes on Tuesday the 23rd of November 1993 and was officially opened as a tourist attraction on the 9th of April 1994. Murray's a pretty town in a lot of ways. It's got uh, lots of trees, gardens, it's got the river running through the place. No idea when a flood creates havoc, but and that, that's the golf course directly ahead. Okay, Dobby Street is to our right, the river's right beside us on the left. This is the way into the golf club, I believe. That, that place there, huh?
it's 9.58, 10 o'clock if you like. And we're leaving at Moree, heading for Narrabri. It's 100 kilometres. Hopefully we'll be there sometime today. We're not in a rush. This place seems to be an endless trail of trucks. It's one after the other. It's quite amazing. Never seen so many trucks running through a place all at once. Harvest trucks it says, so that's probably what it is. thinking I'm on the road to Narrabri. Oh, oh yeah, my otherwise I'm going somewhere else. And Narrabri, 96. Airport on the right. It's like a busy little place and I'll there at the moment. Just got stopped by a guy, I thought he was probably in trouble, but he was pointing at something on the car and I thought, what the hell's going on here? Anyway, it turns out that it's the, um, the rear pole on the warning. It's come and drift at the bottom and it's waving around. So, uh, we've got a professional repair on a table tie. They do great things to table ties. Now, I'm only 15k out of town. Yep, there are just trucks everywhere here at the moment. I've got one right behind me at the moment. This is girly, cheeky one, L-E-Y, not like their pub. Too busy let trucks go past. It's a range of hills out to the left of it that looks a bit looks a bit like when you're driving out just to pass road, you're coming towards the Stirlings. They're just sitting over there. a place called Balata, which is, uh, again, I think another green receivable place. There's a rest area right there beside us. Balata is an RV friendly town, it says. Trucks up here at the roadhouse. The 
truck still still rolling along. Three trucks going past me the other way. There's those two, that's five plus six. Seven, camper vans, eight, camper van, nine, and they're not all county drain. Too. There's the hills just over there. About halfway to then I'm right from Marine. They drew away. That's cheap petrol, it says. Grain harvest is on in earnest. This is Narrabri, and half the population of Moree, five and a half to six thousand, as opposed to about nine, nine and a half. It's got a McDonald's, eh? It's got a Kentucky Fried. Narrabri, Australia's greatest sporting town, it says. Here, but I've got a feeling that the uh, main street's the next street up. And here the Angle Park knows first. Interesting. Halfway down the main street, as I come in here.
That's a great old building, so he is attached to the hotel there. This place seems to be a little more lively than what Maureen was yesterday, that's for sure. I don't know what stilettos used to be, but... We've got the two majors here, trolling the town. It's Thursday. Uh, I think it's the 30th of October, I'm not too sure. Anyhow, we're off to uh, the Mount Capita National Park. There's two separate locations I need to go to, but you go out to one, then you come back into town, and you go back out to the other, in a different direction. And it's five to eight in the morning. Uh, let's get a move on nice and early. It's a 750 metre walk, apparently, to uh, the um, Sawn Rocks. So uh, I want to get that out of the way while it's cool in the morning. So the turn off the sawn rocks on the picnic area.
So we've been back into town and we're now heading out towards Mount Capita. That one I've been watching it for a while. It's an interesting one. Alright, we've reached this point. No caravans past this point. 20 kilometres, very narrow winding road. Drive carefully, headlights on for safety. We're entering Mount Capital National Park, but no domestic pets allowed here, no dogs or whatever. So we're looking down on. I don't know crazy you have to build these roads through here. Up here they've got an arm car railing, why they haven't done that all the way down, I'm damned if I know. The way they've got this arm car railing, there's no way, no way is it as bad as what it has been, but again, that's a campground in there. It's the Bark Hut camping area. Where's the Capita rock? Look at it. Whoa, look at that rock. Well, there's a T junction. Mount Capitao Summit finally to the left, Dawson Spring kilometre to the other way, so we'll go up to the summit first. There you go, I'm looking for some spray. I suspect the Dawson Spring is down and underneath. Yeah, because there was a walking track down there. Mm -hmm. All the point is, we'll be down the bottom. Get some cabins here.
Well, once you can't down occupied, which makes sense, I guess, it's our season. And the camping area is down below. Really quite closely set up in here. Lots of chairs, tables. And of course it is standing area, so and there's a 1.5 kilometer reply uh, re easy easy walk nature trail. Two and showers, male and female, I do some of the unisex. The camping fees to apply in here, of course. Let's ride the last spectators us up to the uh, tower. Jason's tower. Any point of the GPS beyond? That's Bickford's car park. <laughs> There's the Bundabala circuit, so that's another walk. And at this point I think we will return. It's three minutes past one. It's been a pretty good day. Yeah, I'm back down the mountain. We're currently at 1431 feet. Uh, metres at least we have been 1479. to climb of course to the top of uh, the mountain. It's 15.38 kilometres of uh, bitumen at the top. It's just around about 5 kilometres thereabouts. Good. I'll use my clock if you like. The cuts at the side of the hill here. The guys who build these roads, that'd be crazy. Journey has been achieved.
way back in the line, probably. I'm going to say these are W Marathon right here. Jeez, one of these two are bridges. Creek. Looks like it really flows when it gets full of water. Can we go to the Australian telescope? Where it is, it's run by the CSIRA. Right? Yeah, it's an national facility. So there we go, how's that? Yep, very good. Now, I'm just going to turn the camera around and point it at you. Good one. Thank you. So what they're saying is that what's happening is the head is near the dish's focal point. The sound waves produced by your voice bounce off the dish's surface and travel in almost a straight line over to the other dish. The other dish collects them and directs them to the focal point under the ears of the listener. Same way the dishes of the Australia Telescope Compact Array collect radio waves coming from space and focus and concentrate them. Now this is an interesting uh, thing, this is a simple radio telescope. All warm things produce radio waves, the sun is the closest star to us, and it's the strongest radio source in the sky. Now if we point this dish at the sun, the shadow of the feed should fall right in the middle of the dish. And when the dish is capturing radio wa waves, you hear a hiss. The stronger the waves, the louder the hiss, and the more the meter will move. Now, a bit like using a satellite dish to capture TV. Keep swinging until it starts to make a noise. There are a number of interpretive signs here, which explain how radio waves work and how radio telescopes see things differently to light telescopes. The visitor centre here is an interpretive centre and really is well worth a visit. It's one of the array of telescopes. It sits on rails so they can move it. And there's a couple more telescopes in the way. There's two more of the telescopes down that way. Uh, 
This is the Yari Lake Flora and Fauna Reserve. There are picnic tables and little shelters all around the lake. Something a little more substantial over there, probably the caravan park. We're going to go and have a look. Looks like the caravan park here. Very nice, very nice. Boat rack. $20 a night powered site, overnight $15 on power. This is the bridge in the, in the Wee Walk, crossing the Wee Walk Lagoon, as they call it. I have no idea where the roads go or where the town is. I guess we've got to find out. The right. Okay. This is also the road back narrow road. Decent quality goods. I've seen them before. Shop, cut above. First stop there. I like putting these tables and chairs and things on the crosswalks of these towns over here. Yeah. Come back and do a video of that hotel in a minute. It's the Imperial Hotel. Three story hotel, one of the earliest I believe in the state. Bread shop. Like that idea. Back to that moment.
just in the case that it's something that's given there.
If you enjoyed this video, there are over 400 more just like it on this channel. Subscribe and hit the notification bell and we'll let you know when our next video is available. If you like this video, hit the like button and maybe even leave a comment. If you weren't too impressed, then the dislike button tells us absolutely nothing. So tell us why, so that we can do something about it. Thanks for watching.